dress so high and my dress is so low. Jumping jelly sticks, we got magic? How Disenchanted really looks without CGI. The live-action remake project that Disney has been working on has resulted in declining results. As soon as the upper echelons of Disney's Mouse House realized how well Alice in Wonderland performed at the box office, they went completely mad. Because of this, they were able to produce Maleficent, Cinderella, The Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, as well as Pinocchio. And none of them have even come close to the animated versions of the characters they were based on. The strange thing is that a Disney fairy tale from all the way back in 2007 brought out the striking disparity between live-action reality and animated fantasy. If only those responsible for giving the film stated above the go-ahead had learned the appropriate lessons from Enchanted, then maybe they wouldn't be in this predicament. Thankfully, its sequel, Disenchanted, is here to make us think deeply about our conceptions of reality and imagination while also giving a meta-commentary on how live-action adaptations drain the vitality out of animation masterpieces. So keep watching to learn more about this movie and to see what it actually looks like without CGI. Disenchanted Review Disenchanted is a movie that was directed by Adam Shankman, written by Bridget Hales, and based on a tale that was written by David N. Weiss, J. David Stem, and Richard Lagravenez. The plot centers on a married couple named Giselle and Robert. Now they are parents to a young girl whom they have named Sophia. Morgan, Robert's daughter from his previous marriage, is now a teenager. In the first movie, she was portrayed by Rachel Covey. In this one, she is portrayed by Gabriella Baldacchino. And with the additional challenge of the cramped lodgings in New York, it's a bit too much for Giselle to handle all at once. As a result, she decides to look for a home in the Monroeville area so that their family would have more room to expand in the future. However, such a choice comes with its own set of challenges to face. To begin, there are a number of repairs that need to be done to the home. Second, in order to go to New York, Robert will have to take the train. Morgan needs time to acclimatize to her new school, which contains all of the typical social groups and cliques. Malvina Monroe is known as the Queen Bee of Monroeville. She views Giselle as a competitor to her position as the most popular person in the town. The Story the story of Disenchanted works on a staggering number of different levels, which makes it really amazing. Giselle's penchant for daydreaming is illustrative of a universal human tendency to dissociate oneself from the harshness of the present moment as soon as it proves to be insurmountable. But as Giselle's attempts to flee into such a dream backfire on her and she and the world around her start turning into the tropes that Enchanted had dismantled, she comes to the realization that painting over one's reality does not cure any problems. This whole change of Giselle is illustrative of the corrupting force of selfishness and how it can cause even the most upbeat and constructive person in the world to behave in a self-absorbed and destructive manner. When they are made into a real fairy tale world, Malvina and Monroeville become more of a symbol of classism and gated enclaves, and their problems become more obvious as a result. The problems of subservience, sexism, most of which is internalized, and conservatism came to a head demonstrating that real-world contemporary interpretations of traditions that are presented in tales as normal may give rise to uncomfortable feelings in real life. If you are wicked, then maybe everything seems just like your own house to you. How Disenchanted Really Looks Without CGI This takes us to the question of how truth, fiction, and everything in between may be represented visually. To begin, in contrast to a good many of Disney's recent live-action endeavors, Disenchanted has a superb visual and aural aesthetic. All of the visual effects, including the VFX, CGI, SFX, and stunt work, as well as the cinematography, which was done by Simon Duggan, the editing, which was done by Emma E. Hickox and Chris Lebenzon, the production design, which was done by Dan Henna, the art direction, the set design, the costume design, which was done by Joan Bergen, the hair and makeup, and the work that was done by Dan Henna, are all it's possible that the discussion sequences may seem a touch too static at times. Therefore, if you're wondering how well Disenchanted might look without CGI, the answer is not very. However, the dynamic nature of the shot arrangement and color allows for some leeway to be taken, and when the song and dance moments begin, notably Batter, Shankman just throws caution to the wind and asks you to dance along with Amy Adams, Maya Rudolph, and the rest of the cast and supporting artists in the production. In addition to that, there is the two-dimensional animation, which not only has a wonderful aesthetic, but also functions as a metaphor for the vividness with which it can interpret reality, feelings, and memories. The message that Disenchanted is trying to convey, whether it was done so accidentally or very consciously, 
is that the enchantment of animation shouldn't be taken out of live action and placed there. Acting. When it comes to the acting in Disenchanted, it is abundantly evident that every single person in the movie is having an incredible amount of fun. Both the Queen Bee version of Malvina and the villainous Queen version of Malvina is played impeccably by Maya Rudolph, who is just flawless in both roles. Her chemistry with Amy Adams is electric, and everything about her performance is exceptional, from her body language to the reactions she makes with her face. The lighthearted moments are provided by Yvette Nicole Brown and Jayma Mays. However, they never take up too much of our time. The same can be said of Oscar Nunez. We'll never tire of seeing a cameo by any of the cast members from that show in any film or television show. Idina Menzel and James Marsden both provide delightfully lengthy cameo appearances in this film. Patrick Dempsey is a wonderful actor and so gorgeous. If our memory serves us correctly, he pulled out a good portion of his dangerous acts on his own, which earns him bonus points. Griffin Newman, who plays Pip, is fantastic in both the role of a cat and a chipmunk. Gabriella Baldacini gives a star-making performance. When you are performing opposite Amy Adams, it is a really difficult assignment to pull this off well. Not just regular Amy Adams. On the other hand, there's the sort of Amy Adams that looks like she's having the time of her life. She is here to make you sing, dance, weep, smile, and wonder at how she can turn from gloomy evil to sun-kissed sweetness in the blink of an eye. She is here to make you do all of these things. In addition, we owe her gratitude for the significant impact she's had in the field of entertainment. Does this movie deserve your time? If we're being really honest, we didn't have any expectations for the show Disenchanted. You have to understand that Enchanted was a significant part of an upbringing in many ways. And after seeing countless number of Disney's empty live-action remakes, adaptations, and sequels, we had no idea what they were going to do with the movie. After finishing the first movie, we immediately started watching the second one, which turned out to be a really pleasurable experience. In light of the fact that those songs and Amy Adams' soaring performance would have undoubtedly brought down the house, this should have been seen in a theatrical setting. On the other hand, instead of always living in what-if situations like the characters in the movie, we need to face the reality of the issue and deal with it accordingly. Watching Disenchanted on Disney Plus Hotstar is something that you should do with your friends and or family, and you should take some time out for yourself. In our opinion, it is easily one of the finest movies of the year, because it has a really powerful message about overcoming the defects of the environment in which you discovered love, rather than depending on escapists and tempting dreams to fix all of your issues. And that's it. Leave a comment below and tell us what you think this movie would look like if it didn't rely on computer-generated imagery. Thanks for watching this video. Click the subscribe button and see you in the following video.